Hello everyone, welcome to Econometrics, I'm Sebastian Y. In this video I'm going to show you how to use polynomial functional forms in a regression. I've got the data from the current population survey loaded up here. We're going to start by running a basic regression of wage on years of experience. We can see here that for every year of experience a worker has, they are earning about 12 cents more per hour. We can visualize this using a scatter plot with two-way. So we'll make a scatter plot of wage and experience and then put the linear fit line through that. And that's going to give us the exact same line that we just estimated. We can see a gently upward sloping line here. But if we look at this data, we can see that we might have a little bit more of a nuanced shape. It certainly looks like these workers on the very, very high end are actually making a little bit less than the ones more towards the middle. And that could suggest maybe an inverted U type relationship. To see if that's the case, we can add in a squared term to make this a parabola instead of a line. So I'm going to generate a new variable. I'll call it experience2 for experience squared. Of course, you can call it whatever you want, but I usually follow that pattern. Now we can run a regression of wage on both experience and experience squared. You always need to include the lower order term when you add a squared. What we see here is a pretty classic shape for a quadratic function. Bigger positive number on the experience variable and a smaller negative number next to experience squared. What this indicates is an initial upward motion eventually being pulled down by that negative on the squared term because the squared is going up faster than the linear term. To visualize this, we can go ahead and make the scatter plot. To put in the quadratic fit, we just change this to a Q instead of an L. And that's going to give us our parabola fitting through the data. We don't have to just stop at a parabola. We can add a cubed term or even higher orders than that. Let's go ahead and try that and generate experience 3, which is going to be experience to the third power. Then we can go ahead and put that in the regression as well. To think about whether we really need to do this, one thing we can look at is the residual sum of squares and see how much that has changed. I'm going to run our original regression again with just the experience linear term. You can see that the RSS is about 78,000. And then once we go to this quadratic model, that's gone down quite a bit uh, to about 75,000. But once we add the cube term, it goes down a little bit more, but really not very much. This is also going to be reflected in the changing R squared, where we go from about 3% in the linear model up to about 7% in the quadratic model, uh, and then just a tiny increase for the cubic. So it looks like the quadratic is doing a lot of work for us here, and maybe the cubic is not adding a whole lot. To create the graph of this, there is not a built-in Stata command for a cubic fit, so we're going to have to do it ourselves. We're going to run that cubic regression again, and then use predict to create our cubic fit variable. I'm calling it cubic fit. You can call it whatever you want. I went with the option XB to create our fitted values. Now I'm going to use two way to make a scatter plot of wage and experience, and then overlay a line graph of our cubic fit with experience on top of that. Now, I'm about to run this, but it's not going to work properly. We can see we've got lines shooting all over the place here. And the reason for that is that Stata draws the line between each observation and the next as we move down the spreadsheet. If we go into the data browser, we can see that we're jumping from 20 experience to 9 to 15 to 38 to 19 and so on. And so we actually need to get these in the right order. So before we try this again, we're going to need to sort by experience, and then we can do this again. And now we've got a nice cubic curve going through our graph, just like it should. You can do the linear and quadratic this way as well, but the L fit and Q fit are quick and easy ways to get that done as well. This has been a quick video on polynomial functional forms in Stata. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.